Alright guys, it's um, technically this video is for the end of day two, and as you can tell it's morning here, so it's actually day three right now, but uh, yesterday I had a big day. Um, I woke up early and got home really late. Um, anyway, uh, back to the food tour. Day two consisted of me going to uh, the Italian market. Uh, where I had some pastries and uh, I have to say it was pretty good from this one bakery um, as you can see from the pictures that uh, I did you know it's pretty good desserts so or some uh, pretty good cookies and whatnot so that was nice Uh, while I was in the Italian market, I went to, uh, listed as, according to Serious Eats, uh, good Mexican food was, in its original store is in the uh, Italian market, surprisingly enough. There's a lot of Mexican restaurants, uh, taquerias there. And I went to, um, I want to say, I went to this one uh, Mexican rest uh, or taqueria or Mexican restaurant, which I forgot the name, so I'm so sorry. But it was listed on Serious Eats Dining at Philadelphia Guide as great Mexican food, and it was uh, I had tacos al pastor. And I had to say that uh, the tacos al pastor, I got three of them. And they're really Mexican style. You have two corn tortillas under each of the tacos, and uh, you get your you get your um, pork, and then um, they have your two sauces. Now these two sauces look familiar if you guys have been following me because they're the same exact sauces that were um, that were revamped or uh, refined by uh, uh, Chef Bayless and those guys at Frontera Grill. So, on the left you have this green one, which is like a tomatillo with serrano peppers, and on the right is this, um, you can really taste the, uh, the chipotle flavor on that one this time. So chipotle and uh, I think just uh, sun-dried tomatoes, or not just regular tomatoes, but it was that, it was a very, very similar to uh, Rick Bayless's Frontera Grill sauces that I, that I had in my guacamole. And so, that I had with my guacamole, I should say. So, definitely, um, definitely um, good food. It's more spicier than all the stores that I've had in other locations. And I don't know if it's because there's a more, there's more seasoning in it. But um, definitely, definitely good all store. And it comes with uh, radishes and cucumbers, as you can see, and, uh, and some wedges of lime. You put the lime right on top of the al pastor. You put your salsa there. You put your radish in there. I think uh, you're supposed to put your cucumber, but I didn't do the cucumber because I didn't. I, d I don't know how the cut, uh, how that taste cuts in. But I've seen radish in um, tacos, so I went for the radish instead. So that was pretty good. And that was before I had the cheese steaks. Can you believe it? After that, I took a sh uh, short stroll from the Italian market over to um, Pat's and Gino's. So I did uh, the dueling, uh, the dueling cheese steaks. So first time, uh, the first pass, I went through uh, Gino's, and that was uh, Wizwit, which means it was a 
cheese steak that uh, had cheese whiz and grilled onions. Whiz, cheese whiz, and wit, which is with caramelized onions. So, as you can see from the pictures, It's, um, it's a pretty good cheesesteak. Yeah, the bread was a little bit, um, and the sourdough bread, it's a little bit chewy, I guess. And I thought that was um, just stale bread, but I think it's just because it's sourdough. And uh, the cheese, you, can, you can't really see the cheese. I think the cheese is on the inside instead of the outside. Uh, and, like, I mean, inside the, inside the bread. And then the outside. And uh, I had to say, it was pretty good. I like the sliced, um, the sliced beef. So, um, yeah. And then uh, I went across the street, because they're on kitty corners from each other, essentially, or they're facing each other, to Pat's, where I had the same thing. Um, in that place, I just ordered it with whiz, because they have it reversed. They have it where they, you ask for the onions first, with or without, and then you ask, uh, and then they uh, you, they ask for the cheese. It is, um, you can see the cheese whiz, obviously, on top. And uh, I have to say, I didn't care too much for for Pat's, actually, because I think, because they, they, chop, they chop up um, the steak, it feels kind of, um, I don't know, it feels kind of uh, stringy. Because sometimes you have like that, that string of fat in, in the beef, and they chop it up, and then it still sticks, and then you kind of pull at it. So I have to say, so far, uh, Gino's wins. That's kind of an easy one. Gino's wins. Um, but you know, it's just the battle and not the war. I'm going to Tony Luke sometime today, uh, which is day three, to try their cheesesteak. As a lot of the locals say, that is much better. But unfortunately, there is a Philadelphia Eagles home game today. It's their home opener. And so I have to wait it out a little bit before I head up to uh, Tony Luke's. Besides, Tony Luke's also is known for their roast pork, according to the Serious Eats Guide, Dining Out Guide for Philadelphia. So I have to try both of those. So stay tuned for that for the following day's video. And then after that, I kind of sauntered my way back. I actually walked all the way back up to... Uh, to uh, Independence Hall in that area, had some, uh, took a couple pictures with the Liberty Bell, and and then walked back to my hotel and passed out because that was a lot of food.